Uh, well, as you know, the House passed our bill that in, that gives the ATF um, direction to go deal with this issue. Um, also fixing the background checks. We're waiting to see what the Senate can do. Um, and we'll, we'll find out what the Senate can do, and then we'll, we'll address that then. Rachel. Are you prepared if the Senate passes that, if they come with the concealed carry reciprocity, are you prepared to put that on the floor? Yeah, we, we obviously think the Senate should, should take our whole bill, but if the Senate cannot do that, then we'll, then we'll discuss and cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. How did you all decide to invite Reverend Graham's body to lie in honor in the Capitol? And just how big of an honor is that? And who is involved in that? Well, uh, Patrick called me early that morning. Uh, Patrick McHenry, who's, who, who represents the district that the Graham family lives in. Uh, I quickly turned around and called Mitch McConnell. And, and we got together and decided this is, this is obviously something we should do. And we turned that decision around. The president called me as well that, that morning. So between Mitch, the president, myself, and Patrick McHenry, we made that decision very quickly. Alan. Do you rule out uh, the House considering an assault weapons ban? Do you rule out expanded background checks like the mansion Toomey bill that will close the gun show, gun show people? Do you support program funding uh, that will fund arming teachers? And is there any way in which you support going beyond any of the half dozen or so proposals? Okay, that's, that's like six questions in one there, Alan. Four. Okay, <laughs> let me see if I can get. First of all, um, you know, I'm not going to micromanage this. Uh, Second of all, uh, I'm not exactly sure what Pat and Joe are doing in their bill, so I can't really specifically comment on that. That's a Senate bill. Um, but we do know that there are gaps in the background check system that need to be plugged. We passed a bill to do that, um, and we think that should get done clearly. Um, let me just say this on, on, on we shouldn't be banning guns for law-abiding citizens. We should be focusing on making sure that citizens who should not get guns in the first place don't get those guns. And that is why we see a big breakdown in the system here. In this particular case, there were a lot of breakdowns from local law enforcement to the FBI getting tips that they didn't follow up on to, you know, school resource officers who are trained to protect kids in these schools and, and who didn't do that. And that, to me, is probably the most stunning one of them all. So there's a lot that we have to look at. But what we want to do is protect people's rights while making sure that people who should not get guns do not get those guns. Chad. Mr. Speaker. And oh, teachers. Uh, look. Um, as, as we, have, we have Sheriff Rutledge is, is, has a bill um, that we're looking at as well that addresses this issue. He's a sheriff from Jacksonville, as you may know. And we're looking at the Rutledge bill. But that is really a question for local government, local school boards, local states. As a parent myself and as a citizen, I think it's a good idea. But as Speaker of the House, I think we need to respect federalism and respect local, local jurisdictions. What about raising the purchasing thank you, Mr. Age? Speaker, thank you. And so you talk about uh, what needs to be done. Out. Mr. Scalise talked about meeting with the Parkland students yesterday, and you talked about the legislative process here. What would you view, and I'd like to hear from Mr. Scalise as well, as a defeat on not being able to address some of these concerns from Parkland after they've come up here and, as you say, engaged in the legislative process? Well, I think it's good that they're coming up and engaging in the legislative process. We should encourage it, especially with, with our, our youth. So this is, again, there are a lot of questions that need answers. And there are a lot of members who are putting their heads together to figure out where the common ground is. What we want to do is find common ground to make a difference. You want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, as people are contemplating new laws, I think the most important thing we can look at is what about all the laws that are already on the books that were not enforced, that were not properly implemented? You know, I think what angers me the most is, is when I see breakdowns with law enforcement. Uh, the FBI had this guy's name on a silver platter. Uh, not just innuendo, and there were a lot of students in that school that said, we think he's going to be a school shooter. He himself said he wanted to be a professional school shooter, and it was posted under his name and ultimately turned over to the FBI. And somewhere along the way in the FBI's chain of command, they let it go. I think we ought to ask those tough questions and hold people accountable. There are really good people at the FBI, but clearly there are people at the FBI that chose to let this go, and I think we ought to know about this. And then at the end of the day, when you look at local law enforcement, you know, and the sheriff's been very outspoken in a lot of ways, uh, but I think what angered me the most is that there was a sheriff's deputy trained and armed at the school, assigned to protect the school, and, and he hit out instead of protecting those students and confronting the shooter. I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for law enforcement confronting the shooter in my case. Uh, and it's, it's really disappointing that, that ultimately somebody didn't go into that school that was there and armed to protect those kids.